The class originator here is the glycopeptide vancomycin. Other semi-synthetic compounds have been engineered off of vancomycin structure. These related compounds are called lipoglycopeptides and include the drugs telavancin, dalbavancin, and oritavancin. Glycopeptides and lipoglycopeptides work as cell wall synthesis inhibitors, yet they have a different mechanism of action versus the beta-lactams. Glycopeptides bind to D-alanyl D-alanine terminus of cell wall precursor units with very high affinity. This leads to inhibition of transglycosylase and prevents extension and crosslinking of the peptidoglycans. In addition to inhibiting cell wall synthesis, this process damages the cell wall, which contributes to the antibacterial activity. The lipoglycopeptides improve upon this process by dimerizing and embedding their lipid structures into the bacterial cell membrane. This allows for improved binding to the D-alanyl D-alanine terminus and increased potency. On top of the action described above, oritavancin and telavancin have an additional antibacterial mechanism of action. Both oritavancin and telavancin directly disrupt the bacterial membrane, allowing them to have a more rapid cytal effect when compared to dalbavancin and vancomycin. Glycopeptide-resistant strains of enterococci do exist. The primary one is E. facium. The concerning part about the resistance is that the determinant for resistance is located on a transposon that can easily be exchanged across different gram-positive bacterial species. The resistance stems from a change to the glycopeptide binding site. If this site is able to change from the D-alanyl D-alanine target to D-alanyl D-lactate or D-alanyl D-serine, then the glycopeptide will bind poorly. This type of resistance can be induced by exposing bacteria to subclinical concentrations of vancomycin. Lipoglycopeptides can sometimes overcome this resistance mechanism due to their additional antibacterial action. You'll recall oritavancin and telavancin. Lipoglycopeptides also use lipid anchoring and increase binding affinity for the peptidoglycan terminus to overcome resistance. The glycopeptide vancomycin is active against many gram-positive bacteria, including ampicillin-resistant enterococci, penicillin-resistant streptococci, and methicillin-resistant S. aurelius, or MRSA. There are a few gram-positive bacteria that have resistance to vancomycin, and these include Erysifiltrix, Leuconostoc, Podiococcus, and Lactobacillus species. Pretty much all gram-negative bacilli and mycobacteria are resistant to vancomycin as well. The lack of activity of glycopeptides and lipoglycopeptides in gram-negative bacteria comes down to their molecular size. Lipoglycopeptides and glycopeptides are simply too big to penetrate the outer membrane of gram-negative bacteria. The activity of lipoglycopeptides, i.e. telavancin, dalbavancin, and oritavancin, is essentially the same as the activity of the glycopeptide vancomycin. The difference is that lipoglycopeptides are active against some enterococci strains that have developed resistance to vancomycin. Glycopeptides, including vancomycin, are poorly absorbed after oral administration. If vancomycin is given orally, it will just stay in the gut and be passed. In order for vancomycin to be effective systemically, it must be given by IV. These pharmacokinetic limitations are purely dictated by the structure of vancomycin not being amendable to absorption across the GI mucosa. These same limitations apply to lipoglycopeptides. Key adverse effects include infusion-related reactions and nephrotoxicity. Quick infusions of vancomycin may elicit symptoms such as hypotension, tachycardia, and flushing. This is referred to as the red man syndrome. This type of reaction is not an allergy, it is simply a result of a direct interaction of vancomycin with the mast cells leading to degranulation and histamine release. This adverse effect can be avoided if an antihistamine is co-administered or if the infusion rate of vancomycin is slowed. Nephrotoxicity is another issue and increases in a dose-dependent manner. This concludes the video. Thanks for watching. Please direct any questions to me on Twitter at Sheehy underscore Ryan. I've also included my sources here. Thanks again.